If you use DaVinci Resolve and don't use the highlight function, then you're missing out. The highlight function is one of the most useful tools in DaVinci when color grading. It helps you more clearly see what is selected, especially when the method for selecting is difficult to see, like using the qualifier tool, for example. Some items might be in a color range throughout the entire image. Then when you make a change, you know exactly the areas in the shot being affected. This is the most useful tool when you're grading secondaries. Primaries typically affect the whole shot, while well, secondaries affect individual items within a shot, like skin tone, for example. I'm going to demonstrate the highlight function, then point out a big issue with it, and then share two extremely handy workarounds. Let's jump in. You can select the highlight function on the header bar menu here, or you can just press the button on the micro control panel here. I love this control panel. For the first example, I'm going to highlight the skin so we can correct it. Watch the screen as well as the scopes when I press the highlight button. Only what is highlighted appears in the screen and the scopes. This means I can isolate what I want to color grade. This is so powerful. The skin tone in this example is a little too yellow. You can see this more clearly in the vector scope when compared to the skin tone line. Turn that line on here, by the way. If you have the micro control panel, just rotate the hue knob and watch the vector scope to correct it. If I rotate clockwise, the hue rotates clockwise. If I rotate counterclockwise, the hue rotates counterclockwise. It is the same thing as changing hue in the primaries tab as well. Then I can add or remove saturation as needed for typical saturation of skin. Just watch the vector scope again as I add saturation with the saturation knob. This time the pattern goes outward as you add more saturation and inward when you reduce saturation. These are the only two values measured in the vector scope, by the way hue and saturation. But an issue begins when you start adding nodes afterwards and you want to check your saturation. For example, let's add the famous 2383 Kodak look and then see what happens. It is typical to add your look at the end of the node chain. Look how my skin is affected. It looks oversaturated now, which might be a look I want, but let's still try to fix it. Let's select the node where my skin is still highlighted and press the highlight button. The highlighted skin tone looks flatter now. What is going on? This is because the highlight function will only display what has been corrected up to the node you're working on. It will not include the data being added after the node. Here's the first trick to get an accurate representation of your selected skin tone here. Add an alpha output, then connect the alpha node output of the node your skin is selected to the alpha output. Let's compare the vector scope side by side in both these situations so you can see the difference. The color is finally being included in the alpha output example. Now you can make healthy changes to the skin tone since the isolated scopes show an accurate representation with all of the nodes added after it as well. The second option is to use an inverted power window. Add a node after the node you're working on, then add a power window or outline an area you want to track, then invert the power window. Now reduce the primaries offset all the way to the bottom, lower its value essentially removing the image outside of the window. Then the image inside the power window will be displayed on your scopes. These are the easiest workarounds I discovered so far, but I'm hoping that DaVinci adds an option for the isolation to include information after the node, so we don't have to keep using the alpha output trick or the power windows trick every time we want to accurately correct a secondary after we add a look. After taking a color grading course, uh, reading a few books about color grading, and watching countless hours about node trees, I developed a really good list of best practices for node tree structure, and I can't wait to share that video soon. And I have a video about to drop sharing some fun accessories for the DJI Air 2S in 2024 as well. So keep your eyes open for those videos. The Node Tree video is packed with a lot of great information that I wish I had known sooner. If you have any questions or thoughts about the highlight function in DaVinci, then please let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to get more videos like this, and thanks so much for joining. See you in the next video.